My name is Eugene. I uh, cooked for about 10, 12 years, and uh, I opened a knife in 2010. Uh, one day I just started kind of sharpening. I was really bored at a restaurant I was working at, and uh, we just had a, a free night, so I just grabbed my chef's old rickety stone and just started sharpening this old uh, piece of junk I had. Got kind of sharp, got kind of into sharpening, and it was uh, this moment when I, I when I used a polishing stone and I just kind of went for it. I didn't know what I was doing, and when I flipped the knife around, it was nice and shiny. And that was just one of those kind of moments of that's it. And uh, it was a trip in Japan. I went to Japan in uh, 08, and that's probably when the real full-blown addiction happened. All I wanted was my friends, my co the cooks in the city, to be to be using decent blades uh, and also to educate the foodie, to educate the, the home cook on how to sharpen and how to maintain these knives. I think the big misconception is that people think Japanese knives is this crazy $10,000 of a, a knife and samurai swords and this and that. It's really more about having a good comfortable knife in your hand and being able to maintain it for its life and sharpen and take care of it. Um, as far as the price point goes, it really isn't as expensive as a lot of people think it is, um, you know, for a decent handmade blade. But as long as you know how to take care of it, people are cooking a lot more, people just know more about food, I find, in the last, say, five, ten years, as they did before, uh, the boom of the Food Network. So people are coming in expecting a certain quality of knife. Uh, people are getting a bit more aware of what is necessary in the kitchen. You know, Japanese knives are made a little different, they are thinner than your western counterparts, they are a little bit harder, so there is the possibility of chipping and, and breaking the knife if you're a little bit too aggressive with it. You have, there is a certain amount of respect, I think you do have to respect your knife, and if you don't, that's when the knife will eventually cut you, it will dull out, it will be a little bit more dangerous to use. Um, just, just treat it like a knife, don't bait it. That's the way I say it. Because it's all about the Uh, for me, the most, the two most important knives that you would need is your Gyoto and your Penny knife, uh, depending on the length. There are different lengths. This is a 150, um, which is uh, just under six inches. Um, to me, this this is my main kind of Penny knife, my main go-to knife, which I would use for for chickens. For you know, if you're a cook in a restaurant, this is probably the knife you're going to have on your station. Um, I just think the 150 is great. Now the chef knife, the Gyoto, this is a 210. Um, this is a Wa style handle, which is a traditional Japanese handle. So it is a little bit different in comparison to a Western style handle with, that, are, that is riveted. Um, I've always found that the Wa handle is the most comfortable for me. Now, usually when you come and pick a knife in the store, it's all about feel. So some people love the Western handles, some people like the Wa style handles. It's really up to you and what feels the best in your hand. This happens to be what feels the best in my hand. The, we have a paring knife. This is an 80 millimeter paring knife, a very tiny paring knife. These are more designed if you like to do things in your hand, I find. Uh, classic French tournoying veg. If you like taking off the tops of strawberries, if you just like working with a knife in your hand like that, this could be the knife that's a little bit more suited for you. A secondary part to your kit, if you do this a lot or um, you like a long slicer, is a 270 millimeter, which is uh, 10 and a half inches, uh, a sujiiki. This is a long slicing blade um, that is designed for portioning proteins. Chefs will use this when they're butchering a big pumpkin piece of meat and they have to portion the steaks for service. Uh, these are great for sashimi, these are great for uh, if you're doing hand cut carpaccios, if you are uh, cleaning out a fish, skinning a fish. Um, that's where your sushi comes in. This is not the most common knife, of course, at home because it is so long. Uh, I find the only time I use this at home is when I'm doing something really gigantic like turkeys, hams, um, pork shoulders, bigger pieces of meat. Great to have a nice, long, sharp, thin slicer. This will be the knife that you're going to pull out most of the time. This, this 8 inch Kyoto or 10 inch or 9 inch, whatever you feel comfortable with. This will be the knife that you're going to use most likely 90% of the time with your vegetables, your herbs, your proteins, your all sorts of stuff. Pretty much everything not butchery. 
To me, this would be a very nice, complete set of knives. 